Good morning. Pastor Sean here on Monday, April 26th with your morning prayer. So let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. O come, let us worship him. Our text for today is Luke chapter 9, verses 18 through 36. Now it happened that as he was praying alone, the disciples were with him, and he asked them, Who do the crowds say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist, but others say Elijah, and others that one of the prophets of old has arisen. Then he said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, The Christ of God. And he strictly charged and commanded them to tell this to no one, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And he said to all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world, and loses or forfeits himself? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory, and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. But I tell you truly, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God. Now about eight days after these sayings, he took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face was altered, and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were, walk, were talking with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep, and when they became fully awake they saw his glory, and the two men who stood with him. And as the men were parting from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Not knowing what he said, as he was saying these things, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my son, this is my, son my chosen one. Listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent and told no one in those days anything of what they had seen. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days he's spoken to us by his son. All right, so we have the transfiguration is kind of the main main uh, portion of the text here, but we lead in with um, the confession of, of Jesus as the Christ and, and his uh, his passion prediction here. Well, it's not really a prediction; it's um, his telling them what what's gonna gonna happen. Uh, prediction makes it sound like it's it's not certain. <laughs> uh, Luke does not record um, Peter's rebuking. Of Jesus, uh, we get uh, Mark and Matthew include that detail, but uh, Luke doesn't uh, work that into uh, his um, his account of, of what goes on here, and which is not really a big deal. It's just he didn't include it in, so there's that. Um, but the point is that uh, it's actually kind of helpful to have uh, Peter's rebuke in there because when uh, you know this is kind of a big moment where the disciples finally sort of get Jesus in a way, and where Peter confesses, you are, you know, the Christ. You are the Christ of God. And it's like, okay, we're on the right track here. But then he tells them, don't tell anyone this. Which is always one of those weird things. Why did Jesus kind of command silence to people once they kind of caught a glimpse of, of who he really was? And um, when we leave the, uh, when we have the uh, Peter rebuking Jesus afterwards, it kind of um makes this a little bit more clear for us because, um, you know, as soon as Jesus says, okay, yes, this is who I am and this is what happened, what must happen to me and, and includes the, um, 
the fact that he must die and be raised again as part of who he is, um, immediately what, what Peter does is says, oh no, that will never happen to you. So, um, you know, the reason why Jesus doesn't want to spread is because people getting it, they won't get it. I guess that's the best, that's the Jesus way of saying it. Understanding, they won't understand. Seeing, they won't see. Hearing, they won't hear. Um, they will hear what what people are saying about him, but then they'll get the wrong idea, and they won't understand. And even if they understand, oh, he is the Christ, great, wonderful, he's the Messiah, um, once they learn what he must do, what must happen to him, then they won't, it, it'll all kind of come apart because they don't really fully understand. So that's kind of the, the good part about having um, that extra little bit in there. But... Um, you know, I think the, um, and of course there, there's a lot, there's, there's so much in the, the Transfiguration uh, that we could talk about, but um, today what what really was prominent for me in, in my devotion to this text is just that, um, you know, the part where he says, uh, do, 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 where is it? Oh, here we go. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Uh, for whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. And, um, you know, one of the things that we always kind of go over with, with uh, the cross is that, you know, he, he died, you know, Jesus took on the cross, died on the cross for us, so that we wouldn't have to, so that we wouldn't have to pay the price. Um, basically, the idea was so that we wouldn't have to bear that cross, um, because that was, the, that was the atonement for our sins, that was the, the, the cost for our sinfulness. So in a way, uh, in a manner of speaking, you know, we say that Christ took on the cross so that we wouldn't have to. And yet, uh, he says, you know, um, let him den- if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily um, and follow me. So what does what does that mean? Well, certainly it doesn't mean like actual physical crucifixion, you know, and, and certainly, um, <laughs> what. Well, it, it 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 means we don't have to take up you know a physical cross that we're not he's he's not saying that he expects us to you know do something where we would be crucified and uh, where we used to live um, there was this guy who as part of his I don't know what his deal was but um, I assume he was a Christian never talked to him but he had this uh, cross this big large cross and he would kind of walk up and down the main street and I guess that was his witness, you know, kind of like somebody standing on the side of the road with a John 316 poster, I guess. Um, but it always struck me because I'm like, well, I, I don't think that's what he means. <laughs> you know, that you, you're bearing that cross daily. I, I don't think that's the cross he's talking about. Um, besides the fact that his cross, um, he attached a wheel on the bottom, <laughs> so he wasn't actually dragging it. So, um, even if Jesus did intend you to carry your own physical cross, I'm I um, probably didn't intend for you to put you know, a wheel on it to make it easier. <laughs> I think that kind of gets, gets away from the point. Anyway, um, so if not a, a real physical cross, and what does he mean? Well, he's talking about the, um, you know, when, he, when we say we are, we are crucified with him, that, um, you know, and, and Luther will, will talk about being, you know, uh, repenting and dying to sin daily. Um, and being risen in our baptism. And so this is kind of um, how we hear this, is that, you know, daily we take up our cross, which is to say daily we, we crucify our flesh um, in terms of repenting of our sin, being joined to the cross, um, you know, starting our day with, you know, Lord have mercy, I am a sinner. You know, before I'm barely even awake, I am a sinner, Lord, and I, I deserve nothing but, but wrath and and. and and judgment from you. So, you know, daily we turn to the cross of Christ. Daily we realize how sinful we are. Daily we turn to him for forgiveness. Uh, daily we deny ourselves. We, we, we put all the needs of those around us before us. We, we do not count ourselves as anything special or, or worthy of anything, so that way we may f- might not focus on ourselves, but focus on those around us. Um, immediate family, uh, friends, Co-workers, you know, the people who are right in front of us, uh, our neighbors, so that we might uh, serve and love them, as we are called to do, and um, you know that that's losing losing our lives for His sake. 
which again you can go i mean yes the people who are are, are truly martyred um who give up their lives completely you know and and you know people around the world who are christians who are martyred for their faith i mean certainly they they live up to this calling for sure but it's all the way from from that on you know on the spectrum from there to um to this kind of daily uh giving up of your yourself of of setting your desires your um your priorities aside so that you might lift up the one in front of you the neighbor the 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 one who is um who needs you who who is the the, the one who is depending on you to reach out to them to be god's arms to to grab hold and and, and to, to hold them close so um this is all you know this is kind of daily stuff for us and it's uh um you know, he, he refers to it as a cross and, and denying our, ourselves, giving up our lives, um, because it's 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 a big deal, and it's difficult. Uh, the cross was very difficult for Jesus, and our cross of daily repentance is is not going to be a cakewalk, um, but it is a beautiful act of love, just as the cross was, and is. So, a lot of a lot of stuff to go through in this text, and just kind of. To, to chew on and spend some time really uh, really really thinking about what uh, Jesus calls us to and what repentance looks like uh, in our lives all right well let us pray O Lord our Heavenly Father Almighty and everlasting God you safely brought us to the beginning of this day defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin neither run into any kind of danger but that all of our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Well, thank you so much for, uh, for starting your day with me with this morning prayer. Hope it is a blessing to you today, and uh, peace be with you.